welcome to another episode of Driving to the Reds with Emilia and Larry. Seems like we drive to the Reds quite a lot. We drive to the Reds a lot, most days. We've been driving to the Reds to mail off these books here for the last mm. week, <laughs> two weeks. Yes, we drive to the Reds a lot. So hopefully we are successful this time with the mailing of the books. Tell me about this book thing. These books are going to individuals who have been working on themselves through and using my tools, which you can find at ineliabenz.com. And for a period of time, we had a surprise present for those individuals who spent a certain amount of money at the store. And the present and the surprise was a signed copy of one of my books sent directly to them. And we have a few... Of Four of them here. Yeah, we have a few here that we're going to send today. We've been trying to send these for a while, like I said. So last time we went to UPS, and UPS said, um, we're going to put it on a jet plane. It's going to be out $250 each. each. <laughs> and it'll take about a month. How's that? Yeah. Like, oh, there's got to be a better way. So, so we're going to try the post office. We'll see if Uncle Sam knows how to take the mail, even though it's a state of emergency today. Maybe that includes the mail. Oh, yeah. We didn't think about that. We should have called the res first. See, see if the res is under a state of emergency, too. No, they may be the one that is in there. Maybe we can't get into the post office. Maybe okay, the post office the closed. Way. I know the back way. Okay. And we washed our hands. We have washed our hands and we have TP in the toilet because that's what you need during an apocalypse. We actually have a case of toilet paper <laughs> with us. In the truck because that's what you need when there is a state of emergency. You need TP. We're packing. Yes, a packet of toilet paper and you'll be fine. We are thinking about having a garage sale like thing. We'll just open up the side door. Ten bucks a roll. I think we should sell it for a hundred bucks each. I saw a hundred bucks each a roll on eBay and nobody was buying it. It's just too much. It's it's, it's too soon. Too soon, huh? Yeah, we have to wait a little while. Maybe we should just hoard okay. it for a while. Longer. Yeah, we'll hoard it for a bit and see what happens. Hopefully, it, hopefully we time it right. You don't want to have it too long because then it doesn't make more toilet paper. And it won't I know, be then it'll be a bad investment. <laughs> I guess we'll just end up using it ourselves. At least we will have clean butts for the apocalypse. Right. Well, we use those ba those baby wipes anyways. Yeah, baby wipes work. <laughs> They're far, far, far more civilized. Um, Bert's bees, remember? Right, right, yeah. Enough about <laughs> toilet paper and <laughs> baby wipes, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we're od on it. I am. I'm a bit od on it. Well, I think it was interesting today to talk about how uh, about this little Brides and Grooms of Gaia Summit. And one of the questions that was brought up about it was, you know, with this borders closing and things like that, does Gaia want us to have a summit? So we need to put this into context for those individuals who don't know what the hell are the Brides and Grooms of Gaia, right? Oh. And what the hell is all this about a summit? Oh. And what does Gaia have to do with anything? Oh, really? Not everybody yes. doesn't. Not everybody doesn't know everything. Not Some everybody knows need explained. everything. Yeah, they do. They need explaining. All right, go for it. What do you mean? You brought it up. You explained well, it. Well, I was just going to continue on like everybody knows. You're the one who thinks that everybody don't know. So tell them what you think they need to know. Well, you're the one who wanted to talk about this, so you tell them what it is. All the bride and grooms of Gaia, or <laughs> brides and grooms of Gaia, they've signed a uh, sort of a contract agreement, set of vows with Gaia to embody the highest frequency on the planet in uh, a similar to matrimonious relationship where each considers the other as a very, very close, intertwined through vows and contracts partner where we agree to do things together and consult each other. And, you know, we don't just take off without thinking about the other. So basically that's what a bride or a groom of Gaia is. And we call it brides and grooms because boys and girls are going to marry Gaia. And Gaia is not really a boy or a girl, so she could be both or he could be either. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he's neither. Maybe Gaia is gender fluid. 
gender fluid. One side's boy, one side's girl. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Depends, depends on what side's facing you. <laughs> Anyways, they're having a summit, a group of brides and grooms, where they get together and enjoy the high frequency planet and the company of each other. <clears throat> And, you know, when you go to a summit or things like that, you might review your agreements, you might go for a whale watching, you might make a website, you might connect, with Gaia. connect with Gaia, you might go for a hike, all kinds of fun stuff. Just uh, a summit is a gathering. So uh, this summit's sometime in May, and uh, the brides and grooms are all over the planet. And for some reason, our president decided to close the borders to Europeans, except for English and Romanian and Bulgarian and whatever. Just EU. Because, you know, the EU is the hotbed of coronavirus. The countries next to them or not? (laughs) But not the ones right next to them. But beside the point. Okay. No EU. They're not allowed. (laughs) So, so, uh, you know, of course, other countries are closing their borders too. And it makes travel a bit difficult. So it makes it a little harder to get to... uh, Washington, if you can't even fly into the country. But as a consequence to that, some of the brides and grooms, one in particular, decided to connect with Gaia and see if she had any input into it, what her feelings were. The first approach was to ask Gaia. Gaia wanted to have a summit still. And she used cards. Yes, and these cards, she used uh, Starseed cards, an online version of the Starseed cards at that. And so the card that came up was unequivocal. It said yes about 42 times, maybe 65 times. It was the yes card. It just says yes. Yes, 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 hundred times. No question, Gaia wants it. She thinks that's a fine, fine idea. So does that mean it's going to happen? Just because Gaia wants it? That was the next question she posed. There was no next question. That was the question and the answer. So what do you infer from that? Yes, Gaia wants it. So that, does that mean, what does that mean, Gaia wants it? So maybe you can explain what, what does that mean, Gaia wants it? All right, so it means, like, say, for example, you're in a marriage and your wife wants to go to Hawaii. Okay. If your wife wants to go to Hawaii, are you going to Hawaii? What if I don't want to go? Exactly, right? If you don't want to go and your wife wants to go, you're going to have to come to an agreement. Yeah, probably. Right? A lot of people will say, your wife wants to go to Hawaii? Go to Hawaii. Hawaii. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe not a good example. (laughs) If your husband wants to go to Hawaii. How about, let's say, if your wife wants you to take out the garbage and you don't want to. That's the same answer. Yeah, Should you take to. out your yes, garbage? Absolutely, yes. Oh, it's just, okay, so if Guy wants it to happen, then it's absolutely going to happen. Is that how it works? <laughs> no. All right. But the, we're just joking around. But the example is very clearly that uh, Guy wants this to happen. But for it to happen, you must also want it to happen. Because well, guess what? You're going to do the actions. But, yeah, it's there's more to it. It's not a passive thing. It's not a passive thing. There's more to it than just guy wants it. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of action. It's not like something just happens so because guy wants it. So we expanded the questions to include a few more details. So it's kind of important. Sometimes the details are important. So the answer to the question, does guy want to have this summit, was yes, unequivocally. And the next kind of question is, does Gaia want to have the summit on the dates that the brides and groups selected? That's a specific date. That's a different question. She might want to have it in a year, might matter a week, might don't matter to her what day it is. The other question was, um, do you want to have it yourself? Do you want to do it? Right. And another question is, um, what do we need to do to bring that about? If Gaia wants it, does that mean it is going to happen? If you want it, does that mean it is going to happen? If you both want it, does that mean it is going to happen? Are there no actions required? Are there actions required? So we went into a little bit of detail about it, and the cards were so telling. The cards that she pulled were so telling. And if you want to see the entire interaction, you can join walkwithmenow.com and read it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or if you're that a bride and groom, you could read the, read the WhatsApp. Yep, yeah. 
and then you can join our WhatsApp group. <laughs> it has about 100 posts each day. 100 a day at least. I'm from all over the world. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. <laughs> the gist of it, though? The How would you put it. the gist of it? Gaia wants it to happen. Okay. Great. Great. Now make it happen. And now for, make for it, it to, happen. For it to happen, you need to want it to. Like, yeah. If you don't want it, it's not going to happen. And on an simple. individual basis, there were fears that needed to be it's processed. There were actions that needed to be taken. There are... Um, uh, I'll tell you one thing. Embodiments that need to happen. or no coronavirus, this summit is happening here in Washington at the Shaman Shack. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you make it or don't make it, that's up to you. It's up to you. <laughs> right? Yes. Or the people who have signed up, I should say. Because you can't sign up unless you're in Walk With Me Now. Because... We are hosting it, and that's one of the prerequisites. Okay. But if you want to organize a summit for brides and groups in Kaya where you live, guess what? Yes. You welcome. can do it. <laughs> there's absolutely zero stopping you doing this. So maybe there's not going to be just one summit, then maybe there's going to be hundreds. Hundreds of summits all over the planet. 10,000 summits with different all over names. the world. Yeah. Pretty soon there will be a website that you can go to if you're in. If you want more information about it, I'm pretty sure it'll be something along the lines of Brides and Grooms of Gaia. Yeah. So, .com. Yeah. And if you're interested in Gaia and you feel connected with Gaia, you can connect and converse with Gaia all the time, then uh, subscribe to my newsletter at inelievens.com when this website for the Grooms and Ga Brides of Gaia, this particular, this this particular, particular um, uh, branch of it. Um, sets up the website I will be sending out a newsletter all about it okay yeah, yeah pretty cool stuff so that's where the contract that I've spoken about before that's where it's gonna be uh, posted and um, you'll be able to download it and sign it this is just between you and Gaia it has nothing to do with anybody else yeah it's not a so. thing you join but it is people who have done the same thing seem right. to like to talk to each other mm -hmm. But the relationship is between you and Gaia. Exactly. And a bunch of brides and grooms decided to hang out together and figure things out together. And that's yeah. that's them, right? That's that's their choice and their action. And they can do it if they want. So, exciting stuff. But I think it goes further. You know, it goes beyond the this question about the summit. Because a lot of people give their power away. And... And also to, to, to things that are going on. Right. And Right, that's the basis of it. People yeah. give their power away for someone else to decide for them. Right. Or something or someone. Or something or someone. Yeah, to decide for them. We like our fishing today. I don't know. Let's see what the weather's like. Let's see if there's a market for it. Blah 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 blah. Sometimes it makes sense to have to take into account other dynamics right and make an informed decision about what you're gonna do right so like when you go fishing you look at the weather you look to see if there's a market for your fish you find the buyer and if everything lines up then you go then fishing, you, go fishing. Yeah. you want to go fly somewhere right now you need to know well because of the conditions of the planet this moment if I fly somewhere there's a chance I might be stuck somewhere for two weeks in a quarantine yeah am I willing to take that into consideration will I survive be all right with that or not is either one gonna bother me if the consequences of two weeks stuck in a hotel somewhere are not worth it then don't go but if the, the effect doesn't bother you do it exactly yeah. I mean you got to take into account the realities of the existence and very likely has been my experience when you've properly processed these things and release the energy of fear and all that other stuff about it and just allow to be what's going to be the highest frequency experience that's possible for you to have then whatever that is it comes and most often it doesn't really include you know junky stuff and it could be you know <laughs> you spent two weeks in quarantine and find a an author you never heard of before and you read all of their books finally have two weeks to read and it's the best experience of your entire life i mean truly or maybe you don't even get quarantine or maybe you don't get sick or maybe they cancel the whole thing in a week 
There's a lot of maybes, but <clears throat> it's okay to uh, check the weather. Yeah, it's okay to check the weather, but not, don't give your authority away. That's a different thing. So how would the giving your authority away look like in this situation, right? Yeah. It's like other people decide, yeah, there's going to be a summit. Other people decide, yeah, you can travel. Other people decide everything about your life. I've seen people give their authority away to a, a card from the tarot card, like a reading, you know? It's, oh, I wonder if I should go to the rest today. The I'm going to pull a card. What does the card say? And the card says no. You better not go. go. I can't go. My card said no. Yeah, but I need to go. And, you know, people are expecting me. And, but you really yeah. don't want to go. Just letting the card be the boss. Well, what if you really, really wanted to go and the card says no? Right? Well, I guess, I if, guess. If you give your power away. I guess you better not go. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh, that's what the power given away part is like? Yes. So the cards don't dictate. So what do you do with the card? It said no. Now what? Exactly. What do you do with that? What do you do with information that's opposed to your desires and your will? Well, you're a human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get to pick. You get to pick. You take into consideration and then make your decision. So if uh, you had done nothing different and the card said no, now you know there's a possibility of some interference. You could change the outcome and the no could be a yes with more awareness, for example. Yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> that's a way. Yeah, that's one of the ways. So I want to talk a little bit about actually using the card. It's a mystical tool. A lot of people use it. Um, I was trained in card reading by a, a mage uh, who did card magic and crystal magic in Madrid, Spain. And um, I went to her classes very diligently and I, I was her student for quite a few months. And um, one of the things about card reading is that the cards themselves, they don't have any power, right? They're just a tool. So the first thing that you do when you have a card reading, well, first of all, you connect with it. And, you know, if you have a set of cards, you know, make sure that you don't let other people touch your cards. That's one of the things. You keep your energy within the cards. Unless these people are really, really close friends, high frequency, and you know that their, their energy is clean and clear, then they can touch your cards, but otherwise, you're the only person who touches the cards. And then... Keeps them can, clearer, so you get an answer yeah. that's related to you and not related to somebody else, basically. Right. But you can do readings for other people, right? And they do relate to them. Yeah. But just don't let them touch the cards. It's a mystical etiquette tool things, right? And if you do, clean them. Yeah, if somebody grabs it and you think in permission, you can clean it. You can clean it with sage, you can throw sage the deck it, yeah. you sage it, you clean it, you cleanse it, you know, there's lots of tools out there to cleanse that. So, basically, you reconnect with your cards. But anyways, the second point about card reading is that you are asking something or someone to give you information about what you're asking. So... Basically, you need to state who that is. Are you asking your higher self? Are you asking God? Are you asking Jesus? Are you asking Gaia? Are you asking the human collective? Are you asking a member of your entourage? Who are you asking for these answers? And then you start shuffling the cards. And then when you make that connection, you know, you feel, you sense that a connection has been made with this person or entity with the cars, they can now use the cars to give you an answer. Then you do your spread. And the spread is their answer to your question. Whether it's a personal question or a question somebody you're did, doing a reading for. So that's part, that's the second bit of information that I want to share about reading cards. Third bit of information about reading cards, and I did this professionally in Madrid for a while, 
is that when you do a spread for someone, yourself or another person, the cards will show you past, present and future of the situation or the person. And the future part, this is important, the cards will show you the future if nothing changes. This is the future, this is the result you're going to get if nothing changes. If you like the the future reading, then carry don't change on. anything. Keep doing as you are. Do what you're doing, carry on as you are, and everything will be as the cards said. If you don't like the future reading, you can ask what change should I do or make to change that to something else. And then you can get more information on that card to show you a way in which you can get out of that future change that timeline right not like at costco yesterday where that car was going to drive right over us and i decided i was going to turn and you just wanted us to go straight and i turned and i went through a different place and the car turned and went straight right to where we went yeah anyways. right to yeah right to us <laughs> so to us. when in doubt just listen to what anelia says <laughs> yeah if you're in my life just do what i tell you man <laughs> just do what she just, says just do what it's like, just carry on straight. It's like, no, this car's coming. We're going to go it's over this way. So we went over this way and the car turned. They went over that way. Yeah. Went right by us with one inch to spare. Yeah. I laughed and laughed and laughed. Oh my God, that was funny. Yeah. What that got to do with cards, honey? Oh, it had to do with uh, if you don't like the way things are, change them. Okay. It's very loosely connected. I know. You will have, to be, uh, you will have to be a fairy to get to see the connection. Okay. If you can see a connection to Larry's point, please tell us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the explanations will make as much sense as mine okay. to you. So let's just accept that it makes perfect sense in some binds, but it's not transferable to others. Got it. So those are the points about card reading that I think if you're interested in that subject or you're doing card readings, you should take into consideration. Yep, sounds good. So one is, make sure that it's your card set, set your of set cards. Your set of cards and don't let anybody touch them. And you're connected them clean, with them. connected and everything else. Right. Secondly, know who you're asking. In know my case, who you are asking because the cards like are not sent to their tool. Okay, right. they're connected to But you can't have a default. You can have a default. I yes. default my cards to a certain entity. I call it default asking Gaia, basically, yes. all the time. So if I don't make a specific change to it, it's always I'm asking Gaia. Mm -hmm. And then the third, the I cards. Don't remember. Oh, you, you can change your outcome. Yes, the cards are not. Or they not tell change you your what's outcome. happening if you if don't change you don't anything. Do anything different. And then you can carry on doing them further reading like the future card to see if you want to change it. If you want to change it, you carry on reading. So basically, your future is not written in stone, okay? Your future is fluid and you can change it and by changing your actions and your decisions today. So the future is based on your present actions. Yes. And the cards read based on your present actions. Actions and situation, yeah. And if you want to change it, change it and it will have a different outcome. Correct. Yes. Can you see what the different outcome is? Yes, the cards will so show you. Just you. do another card? Yes. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You play with the future cards uh, place and then you can see uh, if I want, for example, you can say, well, you know, I really don't want to live in that location. What can I do so that I don't, for example? Yeah. And you say, okay, let's let's look at that. And you draw, you shuffle with that word, the wording. You pull another card, you put it down, and it will give you information on what to do to change it, so you don't live there anymore. Basically, that's that's how it works. Cool. I like cards; they're really helpful. They are a very good mystical tool. I really like them. They're um, so user friendly too. They are. And they're yeah. so varied. I mean, you can find cards that really really speak to you. Yep. There's some cards that are absolutely amazing. And I can tell you for sure there's some cards that are absolutely terrible. <laughs> yeah, I that's put them back. Yeah, <laughs> I, picked really them I, I picked up a deck and I tried it out and the first card came out 
horrible, terrible. I was like, oh my gosh, that's bad. Let me check, know, see again. Yeah. And the next card was the worst card that you could possibly get. I'm like, mm, don't want this deck. Thank you very much. No. Yeah. Well, that's a really good way to do it. I mean, if you're able to open the cards when you buy them, um, you can do that. Like some, some, some stores will have a sample. A lot of them don't, so you have to basically Google Buy them. them. <laughs> try it. Yeah. If you don't like it, send it back or throw it away or whatever. Yeah, or give it away or whatever. So. Oh, yeah, I can give them away, huh? Yeah. It might be good for some other people. Yep, might be good for others. So if you get cards in uh, an open pack of cards for a birthday present, you know they didn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. We have a whole bunch of decks at the Shaman Shack. We don't have any that I don't like. No, nope, we don't have any that I don't like either. They're all very nice. I did one spread using three different decks. Wow. And that That's was freaking awesome. Very uh -oh. nice. They're blinking the lights, so I think the res might be closed, honey. Uh-oh, somebody blinked their lights at us. Yeah, Maybe so we're going to be turned back. They're probably going to take our temperature at the border. Oh, my God, I better not have a temperature. We're not, we don't have temperatures. It's okay. We're, we're safe. And we are here. Let's see. The Life hack. Life hack. If you're going to be trying to run one of these uh, quarantine borders, bring ice packs with you. Put them on your forehead before they take your temperature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know if that will work. But It'll work because okay. their temperature thing measures your skin on your forehead. Oh, it does? Yep. Oh, like, wow. I point the thing at you. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, my God. I wasn't kidding. The road is closed, man. We've been quarantined. Oh, it could be a funeral. I think it's a funeral. Yeah. But I like the quarantine story. Yeah, the quarantine story is kind of cool. But there's a whole bunch of cars. At there's the cemetery. It could be cemetery. quarantine. It could honestly be. Yeah. Because, you know. I guess panic. we're going to get out and have a look and see. People like to have a good panic. All right. Well, you'll find that on our next episode. <laughs> if we, we remember to tell you what happened. To the res. <laughs> <laughs> if we made it to res. Oh, we had to turn around. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you on our next episode of Driving, Driving to the Res. With Anelia and Larry. <laughs>